last time on Cinema Insomnia. Miss Mittens, I'm home. Hello? Hello? Doors wide open. A stray dog could just waltz right in here. Uh, Miss Mittens? Queen of Trash? Puddles? Robot 74? Anybody? You are under my power. Look into the hypnotic eye. Time now to enter Mr. Lobo's domain. Look out! Open your mind to the possibility that they're not bad movies, just misunderstood. You're not dreaming. You're watching Cinema Insomnia. Tonight's feature is poorly dubbed, has an incomprehensible script, ridiculous plot, and was filmed in black and white on an exceedingly low budget, on purpose. I'm Mr. Lobo. Usually, as a midnight movie host, I get to mock and, and, and riff and make scathing observations about cinematic turkeys from a bygone era made by people I'd never have to meet face to face. Last time, I had the pleasure of presenting the first part of an exceedingly intelligent and self-aware homage to such films. As you know, I got to interview the cast and crew back there in Virginia and was um, kind of forced to respect them. Not really feeling the, the urge to uh, dish out critiques and um, other nerdy spurts of jealousy and uh, impotent rage and uh, unfulfilled ambitions as I like to do on the program. So, tonight's going to be a breeze. All the work's done for Mr. Lobo. It's going to be fantastic. So, unless I get a, a note, one of these, telling me that uh, we don't have that film and uh, we have to show something more suited to Mr. Lobo's God-given talents, then I will now excitedly present Mark of the Damned, Part 2. Sure would be a shame we couldn't show that movie. Oh, how cruel those little blue notes can be. As a regular viewer of the show, might testify. Fine. Okay, right. The adopted daughter of Professor Ramirez, Diane, has a birthmark on her arm of a bat from birth. Their mansion is besieged by weird, terrifying ghouls, undead creatures who believe that the Diane is the chosen one, the one prophesied to be the love slave of an ancient demonic god that they summoned from a, inside of a dormant volcano. Mass protector, King Silver, fights the baddies as the professor and uh, secret agents who are protecting the grounds find Diane's hat, and enter a secret passageway in hopes of finding her. In a film that's a 
monochromatic stir-fry of El Santo versus the Vampire Women, Danger Diabolique, Plan 9 from Outer Space, Buckaroo Banzai from Across the Eighth Dimension, and uh, Twin Peaks, and also challenges horror hosts to find new ways of justifying their jobs. Mark of the Damned, Part 2, Damned by Dawn. Can you hear that mic tapping? Yeah, sounds good. Give me that microphone. No, hold it up like this. I know how to use one of these. Shut up. You didn't call so cops. So what's the story with this guy? Oh, he called this morning. He said he had news about random, ran, you random. Up. I don't have and you all day. Him. You don't sure. have all day. Is that camera ready? Yeah. Right. Hey, Butch, uh, get out of the shot. Sure. I used to be on TV. I was bigger than TV. You wouldn't remember me. Okay, sir, uh, important. just let me get you in, in frame here. I want my eyes back. The Tandem Vitreous Discerning Telescope has my eyes. They're making my eyes look at things. I I can see what my eyes look at, I'm sick of looking at things. I want my eyes back. I'm sick of watching their conversations. They're bad people. I think they're women, but I can't find them. When I do, I'm probably going to kill them. Dude, you got some big eyes. Shut up. I swear I'll kill you too. I'm not joking around. This is a ray gun. Nice. Bad. I'll kill you. I'll kill them. If my eyes, if my demands are not met. Stop laughing. They got my eyes. They got my eyes and I can prove it. Right here. The blood. Same blood that's in the eyes. Okay, bro. Hey, don't sass me. Man, you don't have a gun. I'm gonna go get the cops. <laughs> don't sass me, mister. You shot him. Shut up. Damn it. Stop screaming. Oh my God. Damn it. Where did you get that? I'm a scientist. I think they're in the woods. I think they're afraid of the sun. So slow, I gotta get faster. I gotta get faster. I think they're, I think they're in the woods. I gotta go faster. Skipper Bruce Hawthorne. He convinced a news crew that he had some hot story to tell. Mm, I remember him. Yeah. He's a midnight movie host. And he is also an adventurer. Fan club and everything. It seems he volunteered for augmentations, but something happened and now he is co-joined on the hypno band with the huge eyeballs in that telescope. What happened to the crew? Uh, Skipper Bruce had set the gun all wrong. His mind is wrecked. He's totally ineffectual. He didn't kill anybody. That is so weak. Well, he will be charged with something. That ray gun wasn't his. Are we checking him out? Mm, 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 mm. No, I prepared these duplicates for my friend. The unknowable Phantasmarek at the Defotech Institute. Phantasmarek isn't sending one of those rocket pack guys, is he? Sir? Hmm? Oh, he's sending his assistant. The LPED are as busy as we are with the disasters and the manhunt for the professor. He said he would be glad to look into Skipper Bruce's situation. This one was dead, but there were two of him, so he's back on. Yeah. What is this place? It's a consignment shop. And an art gallery. We'll be staying here while the city is being evacuated until the zombie epidemic's over. Now, where are we? This is a consignment shop. Now, do you really think he's hiding out up there? That place is dangerous. I wouldn't put it past him. Hi. 
Hi. <sighs> oh. Phantasmarek sent me to pick up something. Oh, sure. It's right here. Is that a danger ring? Oh. Something about the ring is fascinating. Its usefulness, perhaps. Its place of origin is shrouded in mystery and possibly a bit sinister. It seems to utilize the hypnoband in an unusual way. Peril sensitivity. Signals in the psychic environment. Danger on one. It turns blue. What does this signify? A message from the unknown? Its meaning is ambiguous. Is that for me? Yes, it is, and here you go. Be sure to tell Phantasmag not to be such a stranger. Ah. Uh, oh. Bye. Oh, wow. That was really something. Oh. Did she do that? I didn't see her do that. <laughs> Misdirection is key to the Def Patek magician style. Ramirez. Nothing out of the ordinary here. Who's watching you? Hmm. Captain Zadok. That trip to the moon took a lot out of him. He is truly a dedicated agent. And Lieutenant Panther. I believe he has been engaged to Diane, Ramirez's adopted daughter. Says here today is her birthday. Hmm. Today is her birthday. How is George still on the case? He's... He's alive? The lieutenant's will functions long enough to do his job. When did the Baron get involved? A couple of days ago. He just showed up demanding a Model 10 authorization and to be shot into a particularly hot zone of Force 7. Zadok had sent word that Ramirez was monitoring the progress of of a Dr. Blackwood's expedition, which might be in the same place. <laughs> a coincidence. Mm. Yeah, Skipper Bruce was going into some woods. Evil women in the woods. He said he was going to kill evil women from outer space. But don't forget, his mind is warped, and he has seen a lot of monster movies. I've known a few evil women, but none of them came from outer space. Yes, that's right, my friends. We all know there's evil enough right here, on this planet. It's okay, Professor. My name's Manningtree. Inspector Leslie sent me. Huh. I'm to look after things tonight. You are? Oh, there's Leslie. He couldn't make it. We've established a perimeter. We've got you covered all the way around, Professor. Everything is top secure. The entire estate is being patrolled. Let's go see how our man at the door is doing. Yeah, okay. Sounds good.
How's it going, Phil? Diane looked so pretty. I saw her when they stepped out to get some air. <coughs> what? You let them out? Monkey brain! You fool! The grounds you... are secure, Professor. We'll find them. Smell that? Mm? It smells like um, an open grave. There's something behind you. Huh? We gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Lobo is waiting for the beep. Uh, this, this is Mr. Lobo. I, I'm back home from Virginia. Nobody came to pick me up at the airport. Mr. Lobo had to hitchhike. I got stabbed. Again. Twice. Where is everybody? Mr. Lobo licensed and brought home a brand new independent movie that homages the sci-fi horror films of yesteryear. I'd like some company in the studio, so give me a call when you get this message, please. Hmm. Same thing happened when I came home with Frankenstein versus the creature from Blood Cove. Curious. Cinema Insomnia. We'll be right back. Like you, I love to shred, but even a hardcore skate punk like myself eats it sometimes. I'm not like those other bougie lawyers. I'm on your side, fam. I'm Rad Abrams, skateboarder turn. Dude, I can't even. I was lit AF. Even if you can't even, and we're lit AF. I got you. My legal skills are every bit as on fleek as my boarding skills. The judge was being hella sus, but Rad hooked it up. He got me 72 bucks and this bag of weed. It's medicine now. We're just trying to help you manage your pain. Let Uncle Rad hook you up. Don't delay! Call Rad Abrams and Associates today. Look for our ad in Pressure Magazine. Follow me on Instagram. Later days, deuces. Heading west on the long, lonely highway, only his dreams for company, until... My mother told me never to do this. Before many miles, he'll wish he'd taken his mom's advice. When Jim Halsey let the hitcher into his car, he opened the doors of hell. What do you want? I want you to stop me. Once you've met the Hitcher, you'll never pick up another. My wallet's in my pocket. Shut up! We know how to do it. Jesus! Why are you doing this to me? You're a smart kid. Figure it out. I didn't do it. I didn't do any of it. I'm not a killer. Hold on! This morning, this guy tried to kill me. He's been following me ever since. Yeah! Ah!
terror starts the moment you stop for the hitcher. What do you want? I want you to stop me. Tonight's feature was shot on black and white consumer video and was pieced together by B-movie geeks over the course of eight years. I'm going to have to ask you now, as I have in the past, to take the insomniac's oath. Please assume the position and repeat after Mr. Lobo. I, as initiated member of the Sleepless Nights of Insomnia, do solemnly swear to watch the movie, the whole movie, and nothing but the movie. So help me, Mr. Lobo. You may stand down. And now, director Eric Miller and a cast of tens throw everything at you but the kitchen sink in the mother of all zero-budget Virginia-made midnight movies, Mark of the Damned, Part 2, Nerds in Paradise. Hmm. What's this? Nanny tree. What have you got, Phil? Phil? Oh yes, these feathers. She had this on her head. Recognize this, Professor? That's Diane's hat. Well, Professor, she's young. She probably just took it off. Ah. Uh, hmm. <laughs> wait, wait! They don't want to harm her, they just want to take her. Damn it! This place is secure. Come, we'll cut them off. This way! They have no lights down here. Follow the sound of my voice. Who are these kidnappers? I'm not sure. But I believe they're using zombies as henchmen. Then how do you know they weren't hurt, Diane? Watch your step! Ah, these walls are covered with nitre. We're getting close. This is a shortcut. Ow! Ach du Lieber! We are here! Phil, did you lose your flashlight? No, I have got it right here. Stop! How'd they get in? I don't know what... Who the hell was that? You there, stay where you are. I don't want them following us. You might hit Diane. Stop or we'll shoot. Hey man, they got trick helmets. These could be some kind of new zombie. Zombies? I will take care of them. <laughs> huh. You will have no brains tonight, you zombie bastards. Since you do not permit our bullets to blow off your heads, I will use fire to send you back to the hell from whence you came. <laughs> have at ya! <laughs> These are not zombies. How do we stop these filthy, obscene beasts? <coughs> Guys, where is Diane? All right, where's Diane? Oh. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up!
I'm here, Diane. Don't worry. I'll have you out in a jiffy. Yeah. There now. Everything is fine. I tell you, I don't think anyone's going to believe this. Go ahead. There have been a report of shots fired at the state. Do you need backup? No, everything here is top secure. Castle has news about Leslie. Can he reach you at the state? Yes, that's fine. Tell Castle he can reach me at the estate. Do you need backup in my inventory? That's right. Everything here is secure. Okay? Now, now we've got to keep this to ourselves for the time being. Go back to the police station and tell them to release Pequeño. Right. Well, Mr. Lobo hopes that you're enjoying Mark of the Damned Part 2, more of the night he came home. Feeling kind of empty over here. Mr. Lobo's companions and known accomplices are M.I.A. or Missing Insomnia again. Miss Mittens, Queen of Trash, Robot 74, my floor crew, even Mr. Lobo's horror host colleagues across the country like Count Gore Duvall and Carlos Borloff, they're, they're not even answering their phones. What could Mr. Lobo's colleagues be doing at this hour? On a Saturday, October 31st. October 31st? Oh, no. No, 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 This morning, Billy looked like any other boy, but as the moon rose, he turned into a werewolf. He used new Pa's Halloween makeup kits. His friends did too. Look, Mike's a vampire. Amy's a ghost. Pa's makeup is safer than masks. It never blocks vision and it's hypoallergenic too. So watch your kids turn into the creatures they really are with new Pa's Halloween makeup kits. I shot him six times. I shot him in the heart. Man, it, he's not human. Universal Pictures presents Halloween 2. More of the night he came home. Who is it? There was nothing within him, neither conscience nor reason, that wasn't even remotely human. <laughs> this is some kind of a joke. I've been triggered, treated to death tonight. You don't know what death is. <laughs> Janet, go tell Mr. Garrett we're having trouble with the phones. There is no place to hide. He will always find you. What's this? It's a Celtic word. It means the Lord of the Dead.
Season 2. More of the night he came home. I guess Mr. Lobo is still a little bit jet-lagged. Even though I'd already shot Halloween material last episode, tonight is Devil's Night proper. For reals. And Mr. Lobo's been caught with his horns and pitchfork down. But make no mistake, I shan't disappoint the trick-and-treaters. Mr. Lobo just happened to have been saving some rare and special candies in an old paper bag in the backyard, just in case of such an emergency. So Halloween will go on. Why don't you uh, watch reel three of Mark of the Damned, Damned Harder, while Mr. Lobo digs up some treats for the kiddies. Mm -hmm. uh, doctor, here is the late edition of the newspaper. The evening paper? Randama is still at large. Until they catch him, it will be very busy around here. Professor Ramirez has issued a statement. It's insane to rehabilitate the dead. Randam is insane. Shoot Randam and make sure he is dead. Ramirez is a wise man. It says here that Dr. Quatermass is now working on the problem of the earthquake machine. Quatermass? The Quatermass from Africa. Not the rocket program, Quatermass. That's a different hey. Quatermass. Did you hear something? No. I've been talking. It's a natural order of death for corpses to creak, hiss, and moan. Oh, they printed a transcription of Random's message to the president. The deceased represent resources ignorance has labeled as dangerous. The elect of this country have seen fit to perpetuate these lies and make a joke of my research. I will no longer tolerate this affront to my genius. The dead will make mankind pay for their sins. The dead will shake the bones of the earth and learn you all a thing or two. As though human Doctor. sins are of any significance to the things that suck out our brains. Doctor. What is it? Oh my God. You found a corpse. The derma around the eyes has changed complexion. I thought it was the light. But something is moving inside the mouth. I don't have any gloves on. Hello? Hey, we found Leslie. He was in his car. No one listens! <laughs> He's in weird shape. What did he say? He's been doing some math and he's got notes on a book he got from uh, Ramirez. What? Hmm. Inside his car? Yeah, you Hello, yep. how are you, Reverend? There's this guy. He looks like me. He's a doppelganger. He's going around seducing young women and stealing their souls, which is bad. Now, in order to stop him, I'm going to need one of those weapons that I loaned you, the things with the battery pack and the light. Well, you... Just one of them. Uh, well, we've misplaced those. What? You don't have them? Well, I... How could you misplace those? Sure They're this... not even mine. Well, I loaned them to you on good faith. They belong to the Theotechnic Order. Do you have any idea I'm how sure much trouble this is going to cause? So you thought zombies were bad. This boggles the mind. I'm just so angry I have to take off my hat. No, 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 really. There's no, no that's need sloppy for that. police work. Would you like a glass of water? Inspector. Goblin Rider. I found this man wandering around outside the cave. He says he's Lincoln. That's right. I didn't shoot anybody. I was taking a nap. Abraham Lincoln? Yes, I am the president. 
Howard, in the cave. Would you like a glass of water? Thank you. Here, sit down. Yeah, take it easy. What's, what's going on? And he had this hook to his chest. But it, it how? What? Well, you see, what? What's with the shotgun? At the airport tonight, I found my techniques for fighting crime and ordinance. And I remember something King Silver said to me. After all, my friend, you don't want to use the good stuff on a bunch of zombies. This is Castle, yeah. Uh, oh, you know the morgue? The morgue. Uh, about an hour ago? An hour and a half. At uh, the morgue an hour, hour and a half ago. The coroner was murdered. Is that all? Uh, no. Two cadavers, one table, and his assistant are all missing. Did you get all that? Yes, all right, thanks. Well, Professor, based on what I've just been told, we're facing something entirely unprecedented. We don't know what we're up against. Zombies would be one thing, but we cannot hope to dodge the invisible. Perhaps the best option would be to take Diane away from here. Paris? <laughs> I know from experience that to run from peril of body, mind, or spirit is to invite pursuit. We could try to find our lair, but that may take more time than we have, and it's likely to involve a great deal of danger. And so, we have another plan. I know the plan. We use Diana's bait and trap them to death. That is preposterous. Nothing can harm Diana here in this house. Besides, I suspect that a purely mental effort would be sufficient to disperse these nauseous shadow things. Well, I'm just going to see about Diane. You, try not to get hit in the head. Halloween fun fact number 15. In the old Soviet Union, children used to trick-or-treat for toilet paper and eggs and throw candy at the houses that didn't give them any. Mr. Lobo found his secret stash. No, not this secret stash, the candy. Look at that, huh? The kids are gonna love these. They're very strange and unusual. Take a look at this one. Baskin Robin soft shoes. It's the ice cream that eats like a candy for lick-free room temperature summer fun. Oh, oh, and here's another good one. Look. It's called hose nose. It's a little candy nose you strap to your face and then there's like edible boogers that, that, that drip out onto your tongue. You know, when I was a kid, they used to call me mean, cruel names like, like Booger Eatin' Lobo and Mucus Muncher and Stop You're Getting It On Me and, you know, Nose Picker Licker. And, and if this candy existed when, when Mr. Lobo was a lad, could have been one of the cool kids. Cinema Insomnia. We'll be right back. <laughs> Mucus causes chest congestion and coughing. It can be a late night. Here's mucus. We'll be up all night. And now, a word from Mucinex DM. Mucinex DM! Mucinex DM breaks up mucus and quiets coughing. Uh-oh. <coughs> We're off the air! And Mucinex DM lasts for 12 hours. They need a new gig. Mucinex in, mucus out.
nippers are going to be here any minute. Mr. Lobo's got trick and treats for him. I'm glad I saved all this candy. Check out this assortment. Mr. Lobo bought this at the, the local mommy and uh, poppy groceria. It's even got a little gun in it for drive-by trick-or-treating. You won't see this at the local 7-Eleven. Or will you? Cinema Insomnia now returns to our very own danger-filled treat, Mark of the Damned, Part 2, The Forbidden Dance. If he could just sit still for five minutes, I'd be pleased as punch. Hey, you shouldn't worry so much, Professor. Everything will be top secure. Top secure, my ass. You didn't even try shooting them. <coughs> Maybe you need something stronger than bullets. Uh, he's right, you know. There's laws concerning these things. Careful, Professor. Those kinds of ideas often work out dangerously. We should probably stick to more direct means. Professor, he's right. Use me as bait. No, no, Diane. This plan does not go well with my plan. I, I cannot afford to let you risk yourself like this. Enough people uh, uh, have been hurt already. They almost killed Georges. I want to get this over with. Yeah, well... <sighs> That's a very admirable sentiment and very exciting for, for a young person. But try to understand you may face more than physical danger, my dear. Oh, oh. Oh, Diana, here, take my chair. Oh, thank you. Did you hear the plan? We will take you and use you as bait. Yeah, thank you, Phil. I still don't like this plan, Inspector. I'd rather do it my way. King Silver, how would you handle this? Three-pronged approach. One, you seek out your foe. Two, strive to haul him into the light. Three, crush him. This can be applied to almost any problem. Ha! Seek your foe and drag him out. You might as well try to catch the Windigo. Windigo! Laws as inimitable as any other laws in nature govern these things. It is by the exercise of the will alone that man can conquer the power of evil. I will have none of your traps and stratagems. All that we need here is my brain. Statistical force indicates otherwise, Professor. The situation calls for action. Yes, when something like this happens, the man who knows must strike without reckoning the consequences. I will help in any active measures needed. Fine, but what will those measures be? We need to destroy the these enemies, not simply Institute. scatter them into the night. Ah, oh, yes, we should expect them at night, for darkness is the ally of crime. Professor, how long have you had these pictures of the expedition? The Blackwood expedition? Ah, oh, uh, I was intending to review those, but the monster attacks distracted me. You see, I didn't... Uh, I had not hitherto experienced any uh, premonition of the coming of the dark forces which have changed the whole tenor of my existence. The rationale of my mind and the extravagance of the whole subject led me to adopt what I thought was the most sensible Hey conclusion. Chet, who is this Blackwood guy? I'm still having these ethical problems. Dr. Samson Blackwood. Traveled the globe in search of hidden marbles. He was the first white man to witness the Feast of the Beast of the Mau Mau. And it is his voice I have synthesized in place of my own. Diane and Samson were engaged to be married, but Diane's heart was stolen while Samson was away at the frozen plateau of Lang. His work became an obsession. Professor Ramirez presented Samson with vague writings from an ancient text. Though the professor had not completely deciphered the text, he told Samson it held the key to unknown treasure. Samson blindly took the chance, and now he is lost. You know what? It just occurred to me. Back when the zombie stuff started, we got these crazy weapons from Reverend Mather. We didn't use them because they're expensive to charge up and bullets work just as good on zombies. They might still be somewhere down at the station house. Maybe if we can find them, we can use them. I have to go. Oh, okay. Inspector, I know something of these weapons. They are not at the station house. 
I have them here. Chet. Chet. Go to the basement and get these things. Phil, get started setting up what we need. Diana, Diane, hmm? don't you worry, this plan will work. Sure, the proposition's got me shot to ribbons right now, but with your active cooperation and the help of King Silver, you'll be safe as houses. It's a good plan, a top secure plan. We shall prevail. Good is higher than evil. We're all part of it to the limits of our strengths and wills. Waiting for children is hard. Now Mr. Lobo knows how you expectant mothers at home must feel. And with this new sensitivity, I've written a structured bit just for Halloween about last minute maternity costumes for Halloween. Like Mr. Lobo, many of you expectant mothers out there might be staying at home this Halloween. As all moms-to-be know, Looking for maternity, Halloween costumes can be as difficult, disappointing, and frustrating as determining who the father is. Mainly because you try to disguise that pumpkin in the oven. The local Halloween chain stores, those costumes are focused on getting you pregnant. Try and shop online, you probably can't even reach the keyboard, and even if you could, You'd be mashing like four or five keys at a time with those huge, swollen, baby-bearing fingertips of yours. As a public service, Mr. Lobo and Cinema Insomnia has, have a few last-minute ideas for exciting and sexy Halloween costumes that you can make yourself. You can wear a bald cap and a silk robe and be a sexy Buddha. Or, with some paper towel tubes painted red and an old clock, wrap that around yourself, you could be a sexy suicide bomber. Or, cut a hole in a plastic garbage bag and pull it over yourself and be a sexy version of the blob. Flannel shirt, a baseball cap, you could be a sexy diesel truck driver. Or volunteer at a feminist bookstore. With a red cape and a wrestling mask, you could be a sexy Jack Black from Nacho Libre. With a, with a ponytail and a, a bad beard drawn on and a Green Lantern t-shirt that's three sizes too small, you look just like a sexy comic book dealer. Or, you know, add a cigarette, bottle of booze and instantly transform yourself into a model and or actress showing off her latest pregnancy in People magazine. I, I, I can't keep up with the ball. You know who's popular. Or you could do absolutely nothing at all and be Padme from Star Wars Revenge of the Sith. Well, Mr. Lobo helps that this Halloween is, is the best ever for, for you and your baby. And remember, it's, it's never too early to start humiliating your children. That would be for me. Newborn. With skin protected by the vernix, nature's perfect protection. Now, when this vernix protection is gone, you can give your baby an effective replacement with Menin Baby Magic. Baby Magic is a lotion specially protective for newborn skin, for all babies. Baby Magic helps stop diaper rash, diaper odor. It's inspired by nature's own protection. Soothing, Baby Magic by Menin.
just seen a demonstration of the most authentic Western toy cap guns in the world. They're from Mattel. You can get any of Mattel's rifles or pistols separately or in sets. The Sundowner set, the Frontier set, the Buffalo Hunter set, all carry the rugged stamp of the Old West. You can tell they're Mattel, they're swell. Oh, now you call, Miss Mittens. It's a lucky thing for Mr. Lobo they put TVs in bars. What do you mean you hated that last bit? How come you can never support my creativity? That was hilarious. Insensitive, don't wait. You think I'm like, like George, uh, Diane's fiance from Mark of the Dam? Cute. Quite a catch. At least he's there. I was in Virginia on business. Business, mind you. Why are you crying now? Now you gotta go to the bathroom? Okay, TTFN, too much information? Well, I don't need to know you're going on a stick. That doesn't make any sense. Test, test for what? Crabbiness? Could you hold on a second? Mr. Lobo has some family business to attend to. Uh, why don't we uh, throw on reel five of Mark of the Damned Part Two, Season of the Witch. Happy Halloween. Okay, now start over from the beginning. Master's hands are eager for this flesh to traverse the singular angles. When that time comes, the mind of the girl is to suffer his cleaving touch. If by your failure to produce this girl I am put to his affections, you will be made to scream for a time beyond what the mind can reason. This wizard is strong. He has an ally, a masked man, in silver. Cosa? How is this possible? What talents would be employed for that biped to prolong his life? Would he align himself with those whose favors come at so high a cost? But by his own nature, he has denied the resources to cheat time. Could it be the ghost of the man conjured by this wizard? An idiot force spent by the will of this sorcerer? No, my queen, this is a new king, Silver. The wizard is dangerous, but the masked man poses no threat. No threat? When last you were hunting, there was a man in silver who took your prey and set fire to our temple, <laughs> leaving you the tribute that the machines could barely process. And I see you need a reminder of how insolence is rewarded. <laughs> Please, give me another chance. I will not let you down again. See that you don't. I want to look at her. Bring me to her tonight. As you wish, my queen. Good morning. Have you had breakfast? No, I'm not hungry. Things are very, things are very clear right now, to me. Morning, George. Morning to you. Good morning, Diane. If Musifor demonstrate me. If Musifor demonstrate me. If Musifor demonstrate me. If Musifor demonstrate me. <laughs> Professor, there is a package for you from the Def Patek Institute. Oh, all right. Excuse me, Diane. Uh, Chet. Chet, what was George saying? I'm sorry, Diane. I can't tell.
Professor Ramirez, we see that the danger ring in your possession has been incapacitated. Along with this recording, you have been sent a replacement danger ring. We advise you to be more careful in the future. Regarding the disappearance of Dr. Blackwood and his party, an idol was unearthed at the base of La Montana de Manus Occultus. After finding this idol, the audio portion of the expedition's transmission stopped, and the party's autolocator began relaying nonsense. Pinpointing the doctor's danger signal's origin has been impossible due to high levels of pollution let loose by Professor Random's earthquake machine. The seismic disasters throughout the cities are in fact caused by this phenomenon. Sending agents to look for Dr. Blackwood is impossible at this time. All the Institute's resources have been put to the manhunt for Dr. Random. Because of your connection to Random, we urge you to wear your danger ring and stop all contact with the Theotechnic Order. At the expedition's base camp, the Baron's appearance 12 hours after the idol was unearthed cannot be explained by our army sources. Officially, the Baron does not work for the army. Officially, the Baron does not exist. A transmission has been intercepted from this point between Hydra and Argo Navis. The transmission began at approximately the same time all communication with the Blackwood party ended. The six smartest men have found that the transmission's exotic encryption translates to the Aklo language used by certain cults of evil antiquity. Coincidentally, the sample text Dr. Blackwood sent us from your private library is in the Aklo language. Professor, the six smartest men would like to remind you that nothing good has ever been written in the ACLO language. We appreciate the work you've done on the possibilities for separate nervous system communications via the artificial organs. In your notes there is a line that needs clarification, thus creating a slave to the will of my electric mind. Please post your response directly to Mr. Jode, his psychical branch. As of this recording, the pollution from Professor Random's earthquake machine has been stopped. There should be no interference with your new danger ring. Mr. Hammercastle will be monitoring your frequency. The kids are going to be here any minute, so Mr. Lobo is going to quickly make them another treat here at the snack bar. You know, back in Virginia, where Mr. Lobo is treated like a king and actually appreciated, I was taught by a Virginia least access horror host slob zombie to make a down home treat that'll liven up any Halloween party. It's called Virginia Sun Tea. All you need is a pitcher and a bunch of bunch of popsicles from the gas station. Now you open up the pitcher and you put the popsicles in there. Put them in a pitcher like this. You really gotta jam them all in there. There. There you go. Just like that. And you set them out on the porch overnight. Through the magic of television. Viola, you have Virginia Sun Tea. I actually made this earlier. It's deliciously pre-sweetened, surprisingly thick beverage that'll liven up your Halloween party. Why don't you make yourself a cold one right now during tonight's intermission? Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Delicious things to eat. The popcorn can't be beat. 
The sparkling drinks are just dandy. The chocolate bars and the candy. So let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Welcome to the Halloween Ghost Train. I'm Mr. Lobo, and we're traveling through some of the wilds of Folsom on a beautiful and tiny locomotive train. Goodbye! I hope we make it. I've heard that uh, on this night, all of the fantastic creatures come out of their graves and revel and celebrate on this one night. Now, I'm not sure I believe that, but I suppose we'll see as we go through the gates of the cemetery coming up. Here we are with uh, all of the uh, wonderful people who have chosen to take a risk, take a dare, and ride on a real ghost train. We're going to be uh, coming back through the station just made a loop around the grounds. This train goes right through an actual graveyard. They don't use the graveyard much anymore. It was more popular in the 1800s when they used to just throw the bodies off the train. Yes, those pillars mark the entrance of the, uh, of the cemetery. Now, what's terrifying is that, again, it is Halloween. This is the one night that the fantastic creatures may rise again in some form of, of, of assimilated life. And, and I believe I believe I can possibly hear them. I think they're... Oh, I see. I see something. Oh, my goodness. There's all sorts of wild creatures reveling and celebrating. Don't be terrified. Oh, there's that escaped snake from the zoo. Well, I'm sure the zookeeper would be glad to know that she's here. Beware of the devil dog. Yes, this sign knows that the devil dog is there. Is that him? Oh, what an unassuming little puppy. Oh, my goodness, there he is. Lobo's heart's all a flutter. We're heading back, heading back towards the station. Oh, real animals. Look at that. Look, there's animals, David. Look. Heading back towards the station. To survive. Survive the devil doll. Devil doll. <laughs> there's my flashback. Here we come. Happy Halloween, and thank you for riding the Halloween Ghost Train.
there is no other person who could have known where it was. Did Bobby give you this? Or is there someone new? Your Laura disappeared. It's just me now. You made me write it all down. Don't do that. She doesn't like it. How do you know what she likes? <laughs> Treat? Oh, well, let me see if I have something for you. <laughs> when boils and ghouls ring my bell, Mr. Lobo fills their pillowcases well. But tricking traitors, I'm warning you, if you knock on my door, then the trick's on you. Sour moth balls, life or death savers, apples that double as disposable shavers, a few dust bunnies and some rusty nuts, hamster pellets and Reese's lung butter cups, some Halloween candy sure does the trick, mint pocket lint and Mr. Salt Lake, grandma's expired meds from when she was sick, gummy erasers and corduroy chambers, but first things first, um, do you mind signing this waiver? Refried jelly beans for all you rookies, confrontation hearts and misfortune cookies, lipo suckers and a half-eaten wiener, I sure hope your mom's one hell of a screener, some Halloween candy sure does the trick. All right, you know how this works, open your bags, one for you, and Caramel-coated shrapnel and a cherry rash. Some medical waste that I saved from the trash. Barbara Hershey's miniatures and wingnut brittle. <laughs> Just like the kind from when Mr. Lobo was little. Frostbites, bug lights, tasty pins. Look out, jagged lids from old cat food tins. Horse and milk and double dip Lego blocks. Chocolate-covered femurs, dusted with chalk. Some Halloween candy shirt does the trick. 
So insomniacs, when you rang my bell, Mr. Lobo filled your pillowcases well. But tricking traders, I warned you twice, the treats you take home won't be so nice. Black covered shoppers and angry tears, marshmallow night terrors and chronic diarrhea, puking all night in a plastic pumpkin pail. <laughs> it's almost worth going to jail. Some Halloween candy sure does the trick. There's one magical, haunted evening each year when all the scary creatures come out to prowl through every neighborhood. But here's the scariest monster of all. This little witch doesn't know it, but she's taking some frightening chances of being hurt. Her costume is very, very dangerous. Can you see the things that make it dangerous? What about that mask? She can hardly see through those tiny holes for her eyes. If you were wearing that mask, here's what it would be like. You can see straight in front of you, but unless you happen to turn your head, you wouldn't see that car coming. We're gonna kill some children! Skeletons, all jack o' lanterns. Gather round and watch. Watch the magic pumpkin. Watch.
you're not dreaming, you're watching Cinema Insomnia. For those of you who are just tuning in, this is Mr. Lobo's not-so-special Halloween special. It seems Mr. Lobo forgot that tonight is officially Halloween. I just got back from Richmond, Virginia, and boy are my jokes tired. For those of you who don't know, Richmond, Virginia is ground zero for the low-budget indie horror scene. Mr. Lobo was cast in five, count them, five films, and I brought back one for you tonight. So at least, the very least, there'll be a film. Mr. Lobo also unearthed his secret stash of candy. And while we're waiting for trick-or-treaters, why don't you try to figure out just what the hell is going on as we cue up the second half of tonight's feature, Mark of the Damned, Part 2, Damned with a Vengeance. Escort Diane to the club, and then bring the car back here, pronto. Late last night at the San Gottfried Observatory, the Tandem Vitreous Telescope sighted a beacon at the haunted lunar Nazi base on the edge of the crater Tycho. Police are spreading the dragnet to investigate a connection to Professor Rand Da. With us in the studio tonight is Dr. Lanyon to share his opinion on the feasibility of a police strike on the moon. Et je pense, je pense, épousant Georges ne va pas être bon pour moi. De quelque manière que ceci s'avère, je ne me retournerai pas au manoir. Je découvrirai si le roi Silver peut me trouver l'endroit pour me rester. Et peut-être le roi Silver peut me dire plus de Samson. I dream of you sometimes. Chet, did you say something? Something? You seem tense. You need a drink. What would you like to drink? I'll have a vodka tonic. Sure. Oh, I'm meeting some friends. Could you tell me when they get here? You bet. Thank you. Excuse me. That man over there. I recognize him, but I don't know from where. Well, that man is Dr. Guy Quatermass. Not as famous as the rocket program Quatermass, but he's got it together. Oh, uh, what does he do? He's a pretty important guy. The president asked him to stop the earthquake machine. Smart as they get, and strong as any masked man. He doesn't conceal his identity. He was raised by apes. Seriously, apes.
Well, trick and treaters are sure taking their time. Mr. Lobo's stomach is growling. I mean, I suppose there'd be plenty of candy for the kids if Mr. Lobo just took one. Let me see if there's something expendable. Here we go. Michael Jackson candy bar. I mean, I would probably send the wrong message if I gave this to one of the neighborhood kids, right? Wonder what it tastes like. Tastes like revised history and ignored indiscretions. Why don't you at home take a Kit Kat break? And Cinnamon Sami will be right back while I pray on this pipe PYT. Speedy McGreedy have created Frankenstein mouth. I want juicy burgers. We'll go to Hardy's. The burgers are juicy and hearty. Right, Ivan. Yeah. Hardy's job royals. Are... Let's say hello to Hardy. Hello, Hardy. It's Halloween time. When you buy a burger and soft drink at Hardy's, you get a coin to put in the fun machine, which gives you a Halloween prize. I got a creepy, crawly Halloween thing. I got a Halloween ring. The fun machine and participating Hardy's. My regularly scheduled Real Seven Girl partied too hearty and is now praying to Saint Commode for All Saints Day while someone holds her hair back. For those of you who watch the program, normally we have the Real Seven Girl chosen by you, the viewer, introduce the next reel of tonight's feature and hopefully boost ratings between males 18 to 24 in the third quarter of our program. But no such luck tonight. Tonight we have no real seven girl, no Miss Mittens, no Queen of Trash. Um, it's a rare treat that Mr. Lobo gets to enjoy Halloween Alone, so very alone. Excuse me, you asked to be told when your friends got here, right? Mm-hmm. I think they're out on the patio. Oh. Yeah, they've been here for a while. <laughs> I mean, thanks to his treatment, I feel fantastic. <laughs> oh, Inspector Leslie. I know. How long are we going to stay? And have you heard from King Silver? Yes, I have. Take it easy, Diane. This will all be over soon. <laughs> Georges, you have a cigarette in your hand. You're going no, no. to burn it, it's your right jacket. Here. Oops, Banzai. <laughs> I dropped it. <laughs> that is the one. It's okay. I have more. The professor gave me a whole pack. <laughs> Those are great. Pretty strong stuff. <laughs> 
Can I offer you any wine tonight? How come you're not flying anymore? Well, I crashed my plane in the Yukon, but apparently I wasn't in it. Some hunters found me miles away, naked, badly burned, <laughs> bleeding from my eyeballs. I was frostbitten, disoriented. I ate moss. Moss? Doctor, doctor, <laughs> belly, belly, we're full of it, full of it. You should hear you about, should about hear my about dream. dream. I'm in the I'm plane, in the plane right? and I hear something outside the plane calling my name. So I get up, open the cargo door, and just step out. No shoot or anything. Can you believe it? It's crazy. You may have been in an unreal frame of mind then, one but partly belonging to the world of things actual. You were far from the safe and comfortable places. Inspector, those two women over there in the corner, look at them in the mirror. Whoa. Good heavens. They are vampires. <laughs> Oh no, they're getting away. There's no time to lose. Come on, let's go. Nine George, come this way. Phil! Get that weapon ready! <laughs> <laughs> drive cars. Wait, but turn that one to the I, left. I think it goes the other way. The no, other way. Push that. Like this. Hello? King Silver. Hello, King Silver. Good morning. Have you found the professor? No, and all the guard dogs are dead. It's horrible they've been torn apart. By some kind of machine. Slaughtered dogs. That's a clue. Have you found anything else? We found a note. It says that he's gone below the unhallowed temple to the belly of the angry mountain to pit the burning will of his electric mind against the agents of E.I. Horror, Que Aspiro Machado. Machado? I don't think that's Spanish. You're doing great. Aspiro Machado. What does it mean? Temple on a mountain. That might mean the old ruin outside of town where nobody goes. The one on the mountain in the forest. That's a scary place. My ancestor ruined that place. I believe he used fire. Fire works against many things. If we could get a lot of fire, we could destroy their hideout forever and save Diane. Diane. Gentlemen, I have to go. Goodbye. Bye, King Sir.
Oh, you no. Know, Mr. Lobo loves these. This is a candy that's popular in Japan, but never caught on in the States. It's called colon, and it's full of little chocolates. I offered my colon to everyone at my last party. It's even got nuts in it. Nobody wanted it. So I suppose no one would care if um, Mr. Lobo ate all his colon chocolates by himself. If I can get in there. I know sometimes it's hard to get it out of there. You just gotta dig them out. This is Mr. Lobo and you're watching Cinema Insomnia. Can you even hear me? But I want free oil and filter for three years. But I want a lifetime warranty. But I want free tires for life. Hi, Zach Justice here with Harrelson Toyota. Come on in and we'll satisfy all your butts. That's Harrelson Toyota, South Carolina's number one butt satisfier. Yuck! Ah! Creepy crawlers, thing maker two. In about an hour, you can make lots of things that look awful and feel terrible. Creepy crawlers, treat the goop. Or in the malls and wait. <laughs> Yuck. Creepy Crawlers, Thing Maker 2, an electrical toy. It's disgusting. Creepy Crawlers, Thing Maker 2, comes with three molds and four bottles of goop. New from a tap. Be prepared for the strange. That's very true. The weird. Hi <laughs> and the scary. <laughs> because our guest star is none other than Mr. Vincent Price. <laughs> His last film was Phantom of the Soap Opera. Our special guest star, Miss Valerie Harper. Just give me my cue, sir. This is a punchline. Ah! You'll be knocked out by the Mama Joe's, 730 Friday on 10. Mr. Lobo is here in Richmond, Virginia at the famous Pump House. This is where some of the exteriors of the Vampire Women's Castle was filmed, where uh, King Silver is trying to get it. Well, you'll see at the end of the movie. In fact, my doppelganger is standing right there where they filmed right now. It's so hot. Seriously. People live here? That? Oh. This is Mr. Lobo's doppelganger, and I'm here on these very steps where King Silver runs up in the conclusion of the film, as you'll see, and, and gets on his bike. You know, and speaking of cultural misunderstandings, hmm, the love colon, scatological categories. Why don't we watch the next reel of, of Santo versus the Vampire Women, digested, excreted, and chemically treated it's Mark of the Dam, Part 2, Secret of the Ooze. Prepare her. It's so full of blood. Her eyes shall not cast light upon a little scratch. You go first, and I shall follow. 
Ah, the queen led us away. Yes, my master will be very pleased. When next you wake, you will be in hell. One shot left. Okay. We better get to the surface fast. We have to be very quiet. Mm -hmm. No. Diane, it's too late for him. I'm sorry, my friend. Ah! What? What? Hmm. <laughs> Raygun. the weapon to use against them. Robot has no conscious will, and I control Robot with my brain. These horrors fear my brain. What about Samson? There is still a chance. King Silver said it was too late for him. Hmm. Not entirely, Diane. Yeah, he's a demented slave, but he is still human. If I can get him to my laboratory, 
I believe I can save him. You see, they tore off his finger to get at the danger ring. This is a good sign. So long as that finger doesn't grow back, he is not beyond help. Hmm. Ah! And now it's time to scratch around and pull something from Mr. Lobo's mail sack and see what's on your mind, insomniacs. Our letter this week goes like this. Dear Mr. Lobo, final notice. Your bank account will be frozen until you pay back the amount in full that you owe and... You know, Mr. Lobo just remembered something really important. You know, I, I, we don't have time to read a letter today. I forgot that tonight is the night that our governmental institutions want us to set our clock backs now uh, an hour and, and change the batteries in our smoke detector. So that, that's more important uh, than the mail sack this week. But, but please feel free to write Mr. Lobo, and, and hopefully, uh, hopefully next week um, I'll have time to read your letter. You can write me at Mr. Lobo, P.O. Box 74, at Glen, PA, 19310. During the spookiest time of the year, there are a few guidelines all ghosts and goblins should follow. Always stay on sidewalks. Never go to a stranger's house. And never go out alone. <laughs> sorts of things. Room free. Sorry. All these traditions. Wait, wait. What? You're supposed to keep it lit. Why? Ancient tradition? Putting on costumes. I look like I'm five. You look great. What did we do now? We meet our dates. Jack-o'-lanterns. Why are we here? To pay our respects to the dead? The Halloween school bus massacre. Started to protect us, but. What in God's name are you doing down there? Hiding bodies? <laughs> Nowadays, no one really cares. This one's the lit. What is that? It's them. You know, I think the trick-and-treaters have already had their sugar crash. 
it's getting to be pretty late in the evening, and it's time that we actually focus on some other yearly traditions, namely daylight savings time. That's in the fall. We turn the clocks back one hour to give farmers and firemen one more extra hour of Christmas shopping, I think. Anyway, you take your, uh, your clock off the wall, and, and while you're at it, you take your smoke detector off the wall, too, because they also recommend that you change your batteries in the smoke detector twice a year, so it's recommended you do it both at the same time. You take your, your clock, I mean your smoke detector, and you take the old battery out, quite simply, and like many things on Halloween night, resist testing it with your tongue. And then you take the new battery and you put it in the smoke detector. So now your family is safe until spring. Then you get your clock and you set your clock back, back, back one hour. So now it's an hour ago and we had, hadn't changed the batteries in the smoke detector yet, so there's old, old batteries in the smoke detector. So what you want to do is take the old battery out of the smoke detector, put the new battery in the smoke detector, and now your family is safe till spring, or, or until an hour from now when, when we got to set the clocks back and and there's old batteries in the smoke detector, and, and then the, and an hour later... Everybody knows Kung Fu. Even my robot knows Kung Fu. <laughs>
No. Yeah. <laughs> oh, your finger! <laughs> Chet! Professor! He was going to use their machines. <clears throat> now Diane is safe. God save us all in the future. Beware the future, King Silver. Beware the future, the future, the future, the future. Professor. Oh, I have called for help. <sighs> Diane, come on. Believe me, he had it coming. What was that? Mm. Very good. Shoot it again. You know, George, I always said drugs are for kids, but that Benzedrine really gets the job done. Yeah. Yeah, I've been up all night and I feel great. What? No Miss Mittens, no trick and treaters, no queen of trash, and the cherry on Mr. Lobo's self esteem Sunday. I ate my secret stash of candy, all of it. Oh no. Trick and treaters now? It's impossible. Pretend, pretend like we're not home. Shh. Hello? was late. Check again. They call it daylight savings. They said it would help the farmers. They didn't expect it to destroy everything else. It gets dark so early now. We gained an hour, but we've lost light. Wait, didn't we lose an hour? No, we, we spring forward, fall back. Or is it fall forward? It's too confusing. 
Don't you see what's happening? All the people are going to have to change their clocks back. We have to warn them. Early bird catches the worm. Tina, you have to come with me. Where are we going? We're going to a place where daylight savings doesn't exist. They call it Arizona. You can't run from this. It doesn't add up! Don't you see? Daylight savings is just an imaginary construct! It's daylight saving. It's not plural. This is tearing us all apart! Too late! No! Remember, we gained an hour! What time is it? We're running out of time! Wanna buy an hour? You're not afraid of the dark, are you? I'm gonna do that while you watch the conclusion. Mark of the dam. Pretend I'm asleep, okay? Look, it's King Silver and Diane. Morning, King Silver. It's good to see they didn't blow you up. What do you know about Ramirez and Dr. Blackwood? Blackwood? Blackwood's dead. Ramirez used the expedition to bait alien body snatchers, then he used Diane to trick me into killing them, so we could steal their technology. Why? Well, with their alien machines, <laughs> he was going to put his mind into <laughs> Diane's body. Yeah, okay. All right, King Silver, we'll be in touch. Thank you, King Silver. Adios. Thank you. No problem. Georges, is that your watch beeping? Oh, yeah. I got this from the professor. It didn't work, so I threw it out. The professor's note said it's not a watch. It's a homing device that zeroes in onto a tracking device in one of your teeth. So I retrieved it. And that's how we found you. George, could I see that watch? Sure thing, but you already know where you are, don't you, Diane? Goodbye. <laughs> Jackass. mind hasn't begun to deal with the horror she's witnessed. Neither have ours. Well, through the barrel of a gun or from behind a mask, it's the duty of men to bring justice down on every unholy campaign that threatens live humans.
Happy Halloween. Thanks for watching.